If you were to ask me to name one symbol to really kind of sum up Macedonian culture, just one symbol to kind of sum up the whole experience, that would be a really dumb question. There isn't just one symbol. There's a lot of different things that kind of make up Macedonian culture. There's Rakia, there's Piperki, there's Baba. However, there is one thing that's always kind of creeping around in the background that I don't even think we realized it. There is one item that's always been there and it's always just been kind of staring us right in the face. I'm talking, of course, about a shamifje. It's been a... I didn't even realize it, but it was a big part of my childhood and I'm assuming it was a pretty big part of yours. So buckle up, because today we're going to learn everything we never even knew about shamifjinia. My name is Nick Sadovsky. This is the Better Balkan. All right, first things first, what is a shamifje? To the best of my knowledge, I don't think there's one word that de directly translates from shamifje. If you were to look it up in your computer in English, it would be dancing handkerchief. If you were to look up a video of Macedonian folk dancing online, you'll see videos of both men and women using shamifjinia. They, everybody uses a shamifje. It's not for men, it's not just for women. We all, we all got them, we all use them. Now, Shamifj is not just specific to Macedonia. They are all over the world. If you're ever in a country where they dance in a line holding hands, there's a very good chance that they use a Shamifj. Damn, that is impressive. Now, if you break it down, a shamiche is basically a handkerchief with some very beautiful bead work on it. The beads are placed there to put a little weight on the shamiche so you can spin it as you dance. Now, let's go to the dance floor and see a couple different styles people use with their shamiche. Pravyoma. Muvata. Metlata. Ortomata. Yadizata Kovedo And Odnesigo Devo Tito Now the Shamifche does have a cousin it Goes by the name of Kyostik A Kyostik, much like the Shamifche, doesn't really have an English translation word that I know of I could be wrong, if I, if I am, let, let, let me know in the comments But a Kyostik is essentially a beaded dancing rope now, a kyo stick works the same way as the shamifje. You just hold it while you dance and then you spin it. Some people are shamifje people, some people are kyo stick people. Now, I will admit, I'm not a kyo stick guy. Uh, I see a kyo stick the same way I see Velcro shoes. Yeah, they exist. Some people use them. Some people do. I'm not going to. But in all seriousness, um, the cure, there's nothing wrong with the cure stick. If you enjoy, if you like it, to dance with it, that's fine. Let me just say this one last thing about the cure stick versus shamifche debate that's been raging for generations. Um, if you were to take an artist's rendition of Macedonian folk dancing, they are always, always holding a shamifche, and that is an artist's rendering of Macedonian folk dancing. So, in our heads, when we think of folk dancing, we think of the shamifje, not a kyo stick. End of story. <laughs> now, in my research, I have uncovered a whole world of shamifjes on Etsy and Pinterest and Reddit. Uh, it's a very vast world of people making and selling their shamifjes, and I think that is just great. Uh, I wish you guys nothing but success, uh, and I love to see, and I love seeing that the art of making a shamifje is still alive. However, to me, you can't buy a shamifje. A shamifje has to be made, preferably by Baba, and given to you with love in every stitch, as they say. That to me is a proper shamifje. It is a gift, you know. It is a gift to you. And with all the pages that I have found that sell shamifjes, uh, I really didn't find a whole lot um, on how to make a shamifje. So I'm very excited because I want this channel to be the debut of shamifje making and shamifje making making a comeback. 
you know, uh, I, I want to learn how to make one, and I think you guys would like to know how to make one. Uh, like, like I said, the Shamifchi is a big part in the background of all of our lives growing up. They were at every wedding, every granka. They were probably just in a drawer somewhere in your grandparents' ha house. So that being said, I brought the best Shamifchi maker I know, my Baba, and she's gonna learn. She's gonna teach us all how to make a Shamifchi. All right, let's talk about what you're gonna need to get started. Traditionally, you would just get a white handkerchief, and that would be your base. Uh, that's fine if you want to do that. I prefer my shamifchi to be a little bit more funky than that, so I went and I actually bought some fabric. This is actually just quilt fabric. Um, it's still it's still light. It's uh, it's still light enough that you should be able to good, get a good spin on there. Um, this actually just came in a bundle uh, with a couple of different color with a couple different colors. Do, do, you, you can do any way you want, either white or go with something a little bit more modernized. Next, you're gonna need thread. When buying your thread, make sure it is heavy thread. This thing, when you're dancing on the when when you're on the dance floor dancing and you're spinning your shamifche, it's gonna take a pounding. So you're gonna want so you want something really nice and strong to withstand all the punishment it's gonna take. Once you picked out your pattern, then we go to your bead selection. Now the shamifches that we're making today are probably the most basic type of shamifches uh, that I've seen, at least. Once you figure out this basic pattern, then you can make it more elaborate and you can add things to it and you know make it your make it your own. Please, by all means, don't don't follow this to a T. Make it your own. Um, for, to this one, for the, for the ones that we're making today, you're gonna want one big, usually kind of more, a more brightly colored bead for the end of it, and then uh, something a longer type of bead uh, that kind of it's so so the bigger one can sit between them, and then kind of a neutral color of small beads uh, that kind of make up the base base of it all. You, when we when we get to making them, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. It's a little bit hard to describe. It, but you'll be able to see it now. But that's basically it. Make sure your 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 colors of your beads uh, go with your shamifche, unless you want it to look really kind of bombastic. That'll look kind of cool too. Again, do what you want with it. Or if you want, uh, you can make it all entirely white. That's fine too. Just a little warning, guys. Um, all of my camera equipment is set to Macedonian cooking. Uh, Macedonian shamifche making is very finite, very detailed, very small. So we have I fumbled around with the cameras a little bit. I got as much footage as I can and as close and as clear as I could. But forgive me if if not all the footage comes out super cl clean and crisp. It's not that easy to film something as small and detailed as bead work on a shamifche. But having said that, let's dive right in. Okay. We are here, and we have the expert shamifche maker, Baba. <laughs> she's she's uh, getting her beads ready. So we all got our shamifche pattern, our handkerchief pattern. Normally, they're just supposed to be white, but Nia Mava me poike sharano denes. Why not? I, I always, yeah, like these are more of the classic ones. Here's a purple one. There's the classic white, how most people have it. Those are fine, there's nothing wrong with white, but everybody's got white, so I always want mine to be unique. So this is gonna be my my shamifche pattern. That's what do you got there? Got some branches, some leaves. Yeah. Very nice. Baba's working on mine, but I have like a floral print. Hi, Baba. Hi. So the, okay. So this is the shamifche, Zanevesta is a zit. So we started. So you're going to start in the corner right here with one with one knot that goes in and it's connected like that. Okay. So we have our needle here and we have our bowl full of beads. All right. Portionally. Okay. So what Baba just did is we're going to start with six of the small beads and then we're going to put one long one. So we have exactly six small beads and then one long one. Okay, once we started with the six small ones and a long one, we're going to put our, our big, our single bead in there and we're starting a pattern now. So Baba is putting... Got the wall. So Baba backtracked and put it back in the last bead. I'll get a few more shots of this guy so it's a little bit more clear. All right, go. Okay. 
and it'll look like that. So after we've stitched it back to the shamif chair, the needle is going to go through and right at the end of that last piece of Bobo Tornigo Sega. Okay. Again, six now, pa. So, so by count, we have six of the small beads here, and then we have five on this side. And we're gonna keep going like that pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Six, five, six, five? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll do this a few more times to, show, to give you guys a better idea of it. So once you have this sequence here, you're gonna string another long bead like this one. So you have it here. But now what you're going to do is you're going to put the needle through the last small bead and ring it through. Huh? Yeah. Move your finger. So you can, there you go. And then you just pull. So. So. So you create a little loop. And you just do it as tightly as possible because you don't yeah. want any gaps in your beads. Six beads right there. Go mm -hmm. ahead, bead through the big one. Or now we need a long bead. Bead and now a big bead. Push it as close as you can so there's no gaps, and then another long bead. Okay, go ahead and explain it. So we have six beads. Six beads, a long bead, and a big bead, and another long bead. And now what you're going to do is focus on the six small bead and put your needle through it. So now it should look like, like this. And you're just going to pull it through. Oh. Oops, there we go. So the needle goes through back through the top, th top to that last bead. This last six bead, Go and ahead, then pull you're gonna it pull it through. It's gonna create like a little cradle. You just keep pulling as tight as you can to secure that. Now that that's all tight, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna get tighter Beautiful. when you add the other beads. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put five to complete that V shape. Five, one of those small beads. Yeah, so six on this side, five on that side. It's gonna look like that. Okay. okay. So now we pull it, now we stick So it now, through. where it's naturally a V shape, you're gonna take your needle, and from under the handkerchief, you're gonna poke a hole, like this, and pull through. There we go. Lay that flat, just pull it so we see, get an idea how far the needle, there it is. There it is. And then to complete that section, you're gonna come back, focus. Move your hand. You're gonna focus on this first bead right here. Uh -huh. You're gonna. Am I blocking? Yeah, you're blocking it. Let's see if I can come from this side. There you go. And you're gonna just focus on this one bead here. And just pull. Okay, pull it through. There we go. Did you see the guy? 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 Did you see
Okay, and pull it tight. And you're you done. Okay. Rinse and repeat. So Baba just started my Shamifche at the very end right there. Okay, so we just pulled a string out. We're starting at the very corner of the Shamifche. Okay, so this is mine. I'm being very patriotic here with the uh, gold, yellow and red. Okay, so the thing is to remember, we have six little beads here, then one long one, then my red one, and another five. yellow one, and then five right here. So we have six to five. And now we're going to make that just a nice sharp V, and Bob is going to stitch underneath it. So that sharpens up like that. And then we're gonna go back under the last bead. We're gonna go back under the bead and same thing. We're gonna stick the exact same pattern all the way around. Simple as that. Are you guys coming over there? It's a. I'm practically a seamster. You're hold, hold it up, Lutz. Actually, I'm very proud of you to show the yeah. camera. You're doing pretty good for your first time first sewing. Shamifche. Your first time sewing. Your first shamifche. It's it hasn't it hasn't caught on fire yet. So. <laughs> so the thing the thing to remember, guys, is we're just we're just copying that same basic pattern. Six small beads a long bead, a fat bead, another long bead, and then five small ones. What do you do? Good. 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 Okay guys, we are about, what, this is, we've been at it for about an hour or so? It's about yeah. right. If you ever really want to appreciate your shamifche, try to make one. <laughs> so after about an hour, I'm about this far into it. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, I'm digging it. I'm digging so. it. Okay. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Okay, I think we're about two hours in, maybe? Yeah. So, yeah about maybe <laughs> thus far, no, we are making progress. We are. Thus far, I got uh, two and a half sides down. Okay, I'm almost done. I just need one more side. But look, I. Mama's almost done. She's ahead of everybody. Yeah, some ready you should mouth it. Video, video. So pilita. Beautiful. Today they are playing back on it. Today they are cool. So, I could not stop myself. I do that. <laughs> Guys, if you've never met a shamifchi before, or if your bob has just given you a bunch of shamifchi, you go give her a kiss and a hug, because this yes. this takes time. It's not as easy as it looks. some of that Okay, so wherever you are, this is how you're finished, but you want a new thread. So to hide this exposed thread, you're just gonna go back in on the bottom, poke a hole yeah, so through the bottom. And just, just pull. Okay, so once you have the thread, you're gonna take out the needle from the old thread and then tie a knot and secure a knot and then you're just going to put your needle into the new thread after this. Okay, just make a knot and there it is. And after a long day of shamifje making, I can hold up with pride my very first shamifje. Not only is it my first shamifche, but I'm pretty sure I'm one of the few people on the planet that can say that my shamifche matches my outfit. Now guys, this has been a very eye-opening experience for me. I have gone through dozens of shamifches in my lifetime. I just kind of bring them out of dance, I'll, I'll use them, and then, I and then I go home. I don't really think about them too much. But when you actually have to sit down and make it yourself, you, t you start to realize the level of detail and craftsmanship that goes in to making a shamifche. You truly learn to appreciate it and the person that made it for you. So if you got a shamifche at home that was made by Baba or whoever, give that person a big hug and a kiss and thank them. Now I hope this video was helpful guys and I hope you try to make your very own shamifches at home. It's Once you figure out the pattern it's actually very simple, it's just a little bit time consuming. Take lots and lots of pictures, post them all over the Facebook page. I would love to see what you guys come up with. Let's keep the art of shamifche making alive and let's bring it up to the next level. I hope this experience has been as educational and fun for you as it has for me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got about a dozen more jackets that I gotta make matching shamifches for. My name is Nick Sadovsky. Good night. Hey guys, if you like what you've been seeing and you want a more interactive experience, you can head on down to Facebook and search under the Better Balkan. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of my videos, 
Uh, you can chat with me directly, send me a message uh, if you have any questions about any of the recipes that I've covered, any of the music on the show, or if you have any, have any suggestions about recipes that you want to see me cover. If you have suggestions about recipes, please have a couple of pictures of these recipes. Sometimes these things are a little bit hard to find, so pictures would be a big help. Uh, if you have any questions about life in general, I'll be happy to answer them. Even if I know, don't know the answer, I'll be happy to make something up. Uh, that being said, hope you've been enjoying the videos. Keep on cooking.